आज मैं आपको बताने जा रहा हूँ एक बहुत ही सक्सेसफुल एंटरप्रनोर के बारे में जिनका नाम है ब्रायन चेसी ये है को फाउंडर ऑफ एयर बी के और इनका जो नेटवर्थ है वो 3.3 बिलियन डॉलर है ये हंड्रेड मोस्ट इन्फ्लुएंशियल पर्सन ऑफ द ईयर 2015 भी रह चुके हैं सो so, ये अपने बिजनेस के बारे में कुछ टिप्स दे रहे हैं जैसे कि अगर आप पीपल्स इन ग्रुप ऑफ पीपल इन्हेंस कर ले जाते हैं लोगों को बढ़ा ले जाते हैं तो आपका बिजनेस बढ़ता जाएगा अगर लोग घटते जाएंगे तो बिजनेस भी घटता जाएगा ऐसा ये इनका मानना है तो आइए चलते सुनते हैं इनको ब्रायन चेसी सर को Well, I think that you know we're both struggling with the fact that our business is probably growing a bit faster in regulation. And the 20th century was basically governed by this idea that there were people and there were businesses, and there were laws for people and there were laws for businesses. And then what happened was over time, within 60 seconds, a person could become a micro business. And then a city had to make a decision: what box does somebody check? You know, are they a person or a business? Well, we really think fundamentally that there needs to be a third category, and that third category would be. A person as a business, and an example would be like in the city of San Francisco, there was a new law passed mm -hmm. that recognized home sharing. All they had to do was go to register our host. Well, if you actually look at the process to register, it actually, if it was that hard to start Airbnb, I don't think I would have actually started it. It was like a 50-step process, and so I think that we need to make sure that we take our time, understand that government is a place of last recourse. We should be partnering with government. But I totally understand why we have these challenges. You know, a version of us is that, you know, we are like the internet moving into your neighborhood, and I understand that why people have you know concerns about that. Right. But I also think the other thing that's happening is we are creating economic opportunity for thousands and thousands of people, and this is when it's really actually hard. Today, I will tell Brian Chesi sir how they started Airbnb, what kind of problems came, how they have sorted out it. और ये मतलब किस तरह से उन्होंने जीरो से स्टार्ट किया वो कुछ भी नहीं जानते थे बिजनेस के बारे में एंटरप्रनोरशिप के बारे में फिर भी उन्होंने अपना किस तरह से चीज़ों को इन्हेंस किया किस चीज तरह से चीज़ों को लर्न किया और उसको अपने बिजनेस में अप्लाई किया सैन एवरी थिंग बिटवीन बस यू एंड एंड आई ग्रोइंग अप आई आई नेवर रियली थॉट अबाउट बींग एंटरप्रन्योर I, I didn't even know that existed. I don't even know if I ever heard the word entrepreneur. That would have been an almost absurd thing to say in upstate New York, where I grew up, to use that word. In fact, in hindsight, the only entrepreneur I knew was Bob from Bob's Pizza, and I didn't really want to have a pizza shop, so I don't think it would have occurred to me to start a company. My parents are both social workers. My mom used to have a joke. She said, "I chose a job for the love, and I made no money. So she chose a job for the money." And I said, "Well, I'm going to art school." And she said, "Oh my God." You chose the only path in life that's going to pay less than a social worker because you're going to be an artist and get paid nothing. And so she said, if you do that, make sure you don't move back home, live in my basement. Make sure that you get a job one day, and that if you get that job, that make sure that job has health insurance. And this was like a grand ambition for my parents. So it wasn't about starting any kind of big company or uh, scaling up a company. And so I wasn't going to be able to call my parents. Oh my God, what do I do? I have 100 employees. How do I scale? That wasn't going to happen in my family. Um, I ended up going to RISD. And the school had a profound imp impact on me, probably much like here in Stanford, because growing up, you're taught to look straight ahead. Like uh, growing up, like, you don't get rewarded for being disruptive. You just go to the principal's office, and I was there quite often. And um, and so um, got the RISD, and teachers were like, "You're a designer. You can redesign everything around you. You can basically what they're saying is you can change the world. That's not something that most parents tell their kids. You can change the world. They tell you to behave. And so." Um, I ended up. One other thing happened at RISD. I met my co-founder, one of my co-founders at RISD, named Joe Gebbia. And w one day, Joe says, "Brian, I think one day we're going to start a company together." Well, I'm living in LA, working as an industrial designer, and I remember my life. And you may be confront these decisions where everything in front of me in my life would looks like everything behind me. And there was the road is like a disappearing road in the horizon, and it kind of terrified me because it was that job with health insurance. And at RISD, I was told, "No, I can." Do anything. I can change the world, and you're not doing that. And so I had this impulsive moment where I go into work, and my roommate or my friend Joe Rizd was trying to like convince me to to leave、uh, my company and go to San Francisco, and we were going to start a company. We had no idea what this company was going to be. We just thought we'll think of the big idea. 
And so one, yeah, one day, I go to work, I quit my job, and I'm um, living in a house with a bunch of friends that moved across the country with me, and I say, okay, guys, I'm going to leave. And they thought I, was, I had like an early life crisis. They thought like they need to have intervention. I'm like, no, no, I'm fine. And I took some old ma- foam mattress, I rolled it up in the backseat of an old Honda Civic, and with $1,000 at the bank, I drive up to San Francisco. This is October 2007. I get to San Francisco, and Joe tells me the rent is $1,150. I didn't have enough money for rent. That weekend, this international design conference was coming to San Francisco. All th- and I, we went to this conference website, and we noticed on the conference website they had like a hotels tab. We clicked on the hotels tab. And in the hotels tab, there are always hotels. And next to every hotel, said sold out, sold out, sold out. And at that point, we just had this idea. We said, well, designers need a place to stay. We literally have no money. In fact, I don't know how I'm going to make rent. So we thought, what if we just tur- created a bed and breakfast for the design conference? Naturally, that's maybe not what most of you would think to do, but that's what we thought to do. You know, go to RISD, you're like, I got a creative solution. So we thought, let's create a designer bed and breakfast for the conference. Unfortunately, I didn't have any beds. Um, Joe had, th- I just moved up there. It would be like a floor and breakfast. That's like not the best thing. And so Joe had three air beds. He had gone camping and he had kept some air beds. And we pulled the air beds out of the closet. We inflated the air beds and we called it the air bed and breakfast. And that's where the name comes from, airbedandbreakfast.com. So a lot of people hear the name, they think it's like, a, like a, you know, like air is like the platform and BB is the house. No, no, it's just air beds. That's all this was. <laughs> this was just air beds. And so um, we ended up hosting three people from around the world, a 35-year-old woman from Boston, a 45-year-old father of five from Utah, and a 30-year-old from India. And now I got to tell you, the reason we started doing this is because we thought it was funny, cool, and we make money because we had to make rent. There's something that happens, though. When somebody lives with you, it's kind of like the arc of a friendship gets contracted from a year to a day. In other words, if you were to meet somebody, maybe here at Stanford or in the real world, and you get to know them, how much time does it take to like, invite them over to your house and have dinner with them? It might take like months, even a year. Like You don't just get to know people. And it, what it did, we realized, is it, const- it, it, it contracted this year-long friendship into a couple days. And so these people came as strangers. They literally left as friends. We ended up keeping in touch with them. In fact, one of the guests ended up inviting me to his wedding. The other guest, this woman, moves to, from Boston to San Francisco. And I think we're realizing there's a big idea here. I asked Joe, I said, who's the best engineer you know? Because Joe and I were designers. Joe could do front end engin- like design, like engineering, but we were both designers and product people. And Joe said, well, my old roommate Nate is. Nate, Joe met on Craigslist. Um, he went to Harvard. He's a computer scientist. And so the three of us got together and we said, we basically had this core idea. We said, what if you could book someone's home the way you could book a hotel anywhere in the world? And that's basically how it started. The one caveat I'll make to the story is after that very first weekend, there wasn't this like flash that, oh my God, this is going to be huge. We actually didn't do anything for four months. In fact, the thing we don't usually talk about is after that, we started exploring creating a roommate matching website because um, we thought no one would ever do this air bed and breakfast thing, but people need roommates. And we thought roommates meets fa- uh, Craigslist meets Facebook, like roommates with profiles. Until one day we typed roommates.com in and realized somebody had built that site. And, <laughs> and this was like three weeks or four weeks later. And I said, why the hell did anyone type that site in the first day? Because I just wasted four weeks. <laughs> so we didn't know what to do. We went home for Christmas. And people were like, what are you working on? And I'm, I'm, I, I didn't want to tell everyone in my family I was unemployed. So I said, I'm an entrepreneur, of course. <laughs> Of course, my mom said, you're actually unemployed. I said, no, I'm actually an entrepreneur. And that's also when I learned when you're starting out, the difference between unemployed and being an entrepreneur is in your head. It's usually a mindset. And I was, in my head, an entrepreneur. And they said, well, what are you entrepreneuring? And I'm like, because it wasn't really a common word there. And and I said, well, I got this thing, air bed and breakfast. They're like, air bed and what? And we just started to get used to pitching it. We're like, maybe we should actually do this. And the, we, it was still not obvious. The original idea was air beds for conferences. So we ended up launching at South by Southwest in 2008. And we just, the whole idea was if you're going to a conference, you don't have a lot of money, you could sleep in someone's home on their airbed. And we ended up with a second version of the website we built and we had two customers and I was one of them. So that's kind of how it started. And it was frankly, it wasn't the Facebook story two weeks, it was a longer.